The Melbourne Demons Premiership defence takes a big hit after a disappointing loss to the Magpies at the MCG on Queen's birthday. Richmond put a big dent in Port Adelaide's top eight finals chance. Ah, uh, something like that. I don't even care anymore. And North Melbourne keep getting even better. This, this is, is the, the Drew, Drew Footy Week. Show. Hey, long road, took a tumble down this black hole. Stuck in Sunday League, but I'm on levels with Ronaldo. Hello, you plonkers, and welcome back today to the Drew Footy Show. Jesse has returned from his long holiday in Ibiza. Jesse, how were the thoughts? Uh, they were they were great. The irony is I actually am going to Ibiza in August. So, um, two bites at the apple, as they say. <laughs> so many jeans, so many jeans. Where have you been, Jesse? The people thought you were dead. I honestly had comments saying, like, can you check up on Jesse? Is he all right? And the honest <laughs> answer is, I don't actually know. But he's here today. I'm thriving. To be involved in the Drew Footy Show, make sure you go follow the Drew Footy underscore Instagram account on Instagram, which is where we get our questions, topics, and more. Go follow it up. I'm trying to hit 7.5 thousand subscribers by the end of the month, Jesse, and this many people still aren't subscribed. We call these people the filthy pigs. Please subscribe if you enjoy my content. Anyhow, let's get on with the Drew Footy Show. Bloke of the Week this week has been nominated, and it's an obvious one. From Lucas Rielli, or Riley, I hope I said your name wrong, uh, right, in one of those two attempts. <laughs> he has nominated Neil Dunaher for Bloke of the Week. Jesse, I was watching the Queen's Birthday Clash today between Melbourne and Collingwood, and the crowd was blue, with blue fight MND beanies. The amount of work that this man puts into fi trying to find a cure for this terrible disease, it's magnificent, it's in inspiring. It's a clear Bloke of the Week nomination this week, Jesse. Any thoughts? No, I agree. Uh, it's uh, it's going to become a bit of a, an emotional sort of affair, the old Queen's birthday sort of uh, big freeze event. Um, but it's great to see the great man acknowledged, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be Australian of the Year one day. Neil Dunaher, you are the bloke of the week, and potentially Australian of the Year one day. Getting into the football, Jesse, we had a game today, which is Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, no games. Game on Thursday. So there's a two-day break, which is not good for the YouTube views, but... That's what happens. We're in football mania right now. Episode round 14. And we'll get straight into our winners and losers. My winners and loser comes from the same game. The Melbourne versus Collingwood game today at the MCG, Jesse. I'm going to give my winners, obviously, to the winners of this game. Mel no, Collingwood. <laughs> uh, they've been playing so good. I've been hot on them all season. And we say this a lot. When you make a good call on AFL YouTube, you ride it all the way to the bank. And I am... Uh, we were speaking earlier in our group chat about how good the form is of the Pies at the moment. They've beaten Frio, the Hawks, Carlton, uh, and now the the Ds, the Premier Ds. They almost beat Geelong, um, and they are just one of the most informed teams in the competition at the moment. Going forward, they're just so chaotic. Like It doesn't look like there's much structure to it. They just sort of run and gun, bloody crash and bash, get their way through. And then when you've got forwards like Brody Meyer check up there, um, Oliver Henry, who didn't have the best game today, but kicks goals when he when he's needed. I'm big on him. I think he'll be a big talent in the future. And then they always have contributors from the midfield kicking goals as well. And their pressure around the ball is the best in the competition at the moment as well. Things are going well at the Pies at the moment, Jesse. We've got a question here from friend of the show, Bitter Footy, who wants to know, are the Pies now in contention with four wins on the trot and three wins against the top four sides? Give me your thoughts on where Collingwood are at, Jesse. Yeah, it's a tough one to peg because uh, their form has been a little bit sporadic. So, yeah, you, I think they've beaten three of the top four. I think they've beaten St Kilda back in round one, who is currently fifth. Uh, and then they should have beaten Geelong and ultimately only failed at the biggest hurdle of them all, which was West Coast back in round four, which you can understand that, to be honest. So, um, but in all seriousness, though, their, their form against the average sides hasn't been great. So they obviously lost to West Coast somehow. Fuck knows how. <laughs> Then they, they, you know, they lost to Richmond by about five goals a team around their sort of uh, ladder position, and Richmond will probably go ahead of them next week. Uh, and then who else? They got, they got battered by the Bulldogs, who have been unconvincing. So it, I don't mm. think I put them in contention just because they're not consistent enough. But if you told me Collingwood win the flag next year, like it's hard to argue that they're not trending towards something special when they're beating the best teams in the comp. They just need to iron out that consistency. Sometimes teams have those games where they'll have like a disappointing loss, and then from there on out. They're just, they're just sick. And it was that game against the Bulldogs. Like, they hardly even showed up in that game. And it might have been mm. like a line in the sand moment for the for the Pies boys. But, yeah, Craig McRae has done a fantastic job with the Pies this year. He could be coach of the year, I reckon. Given that at the start of the season, everyone wrote them off to be a bottom four side. Uh, they're absolutely flying the Pies. 
A side that is not flying, Jesse, is the Melbourne Football Club, who I'm giving my losers of the week to this week. They won 17 games in a row, and it just looked like they were going to walk to a premiership this year. Fremantle snapped their streak, like Snapchat. Then they lost again at home to Sydney, and again at the MCG. Three games in a row at the MCG, and they've lost them all. Their mid-to-forward connection is gone. Their defensive structure, which was spoken about so much last year, like how solid it was, how hard teams found it to score against Melbourne. No one's really having an issue, or the last three weeks anyway, with scoring against Melbourne. And obviously, they're a premiership contender. There's a question here uh, from Ashworth Blair who says, have the wheels fallen off the Ds? AFL is a sport of fine margins, especially up the top. Like, when you're down the bottom, not much separates 14th from 12th. I know that as a Freo fan for the last few years. But, like, these small little details at the top end of the ladder can cost you a lot. The smash between Melksham and Stephen May... Like, that's just going to hurt the team cohesion. It's a term I use a lot. Um, and just the flow of 17 wins. Like, they were really comfortable. They lose a couple. They have this bust up between May and Melksham, which affects the team cohesion. They've lost their way to win. They've lost their way to kick goals in games. And then Christian Petrarch is talking about how the crowd isn't at the games. And it's just these small things that might just take the wheels off this demon side heading towards another premiership. Do you reckon they just find a way to get back together and go again? Because at the moment, I think they're on a downward trajectory, Jesse. Well, I think uh, statistically, when you win 17 games in a row, it's the slump is coming. I, I've been saying that the whole time. I, I think last year, it's almost a carbon copy of what happened. They, I don't remember if they were 9-0 and or 10-0. and or so. I think they might have been a 9-0. and uh, They got beaten by Adelaide. They got beaten by Collingwood at the SCG. And uh, then GWS they had a really as well. disappointing loss against GWS as well. So it's kind of a carbon copy on last year and the same questions were raised last year. So for me personally, give it five weeks and, and we'll see exactly where they're at. It all depends on how they rebound from this. And, you know, Collingwood, Fremantle and Sydney are three fairly tough opponents who are good against good teams as well. So uh, on the surface, I'm not too concerned. The Melksham May dust up doesn't sound great. Uh, I'm not going to lie about that, but uh, it really matters how they respond as to whether that's going to have an effect. And as for the mid-forward connection, you're 100% right. I noticed that in today's game, but I believe that was an issue last year as well. Their scoring dried up about the middle part of the season and they, they came good when it mattered. So um, yes, they've been fairly healthy over the last you know 18 months or whatever. And Stephen May going out is a big structural issue, but I don't think it's a long-term injury. So that's their vulnerability. If they cop injuries, are they going to Um, be able to stay at the top. I'm still pretty comfortable with Melbourne being the flag favourite personally. Jesse, let's get on to your winners of the week. Who have you got for me? Well, for me, Drewsy, this was a tough one because it was a bit of a stinker of a round, but uh, I think the clear winner this week would have to be my boys of the West Coast Eagles because uh, we didn't get annihilated. (laughs) So... (laughs) Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's that's one of the best weeks of football all year. Um, I will say as a little drive-by to North Melbourne that it's amazing that um, we almost lost bottom spot and we didn't play. So that's how bad the bottom two teams are at the oh, moment. But yes, God. West Coast... Oh, that leads on to your losers week. of the week, doesn't it, Jesse? It does, yes, yes. I'll, uh, I'll nominate North Melbourne. Yeah, and I'll just rehash the fact that they nearly went into bottom spot despite playing an extra game on the Eagles this <laughs> round. Just to show you exactly where it's at. Um, G- GWS <laughs> chopped them up on the outside. Um, it was, and we know GWS should be playing better than bottom four. Um, so maybe the, the, where they settle on the ladder is a bit higher, but, um, North were fairly uncompetitive in the first half and sort of clawed it back in the second half. It's just unbelievable how bad these two teams are. North Melbourne are in the absolute pits and they talk about a side move to Tasmania sort of being on the cards and North Melbourne's always thrown up. At this point, you sort of just got to... What's that Japanese suicide to the to the stomach called? Uh, Hiroshima. Just, yeah, <laughs> not, I think... It's not North- Hiroshima. Hiroshima <laughs> was the place that got bombed by nuclear. <laughs> North Melbourne, I think, should do a seppuku and commit suicide in North Melbourne for honour and start a new thing in Tasmania. That'd be so exciting for them to start up a new club in Tassie. Obviously, it's so easy to say as a fan of a different club, but like, just nothing is going right there at the moment. They're like recruiting staff... Uh, departed halfway through the season when the under-19 championships aren't far away at all. Jason Horn francis didn't re-sign. Cam Zerha didn't re-sign. None of their draft picks prior to sort of maybe the last few years have been successful. It's just all going tits up at North Melbourne. So they've evaded losers of the week for a long time, Jesse. Um, but they have 
easily probably been the losers of the year. Very close to your boys, but let's just rehash that North Melbourne nearly went bottom with a game in hand. Yeah, and uh, Sapuku is the only answer when your team is Sapupu. So, yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> We're back, baby. <laughs> Not racist. Ladies and gentlemen, buckle up, buckle up for the quick fire steamroll. Jesse, you still hold the record at eight correct answers. Nine. I still don't understand the game. They're all opinion-based questions, but continue. Answer as many questions as you can in 30 seconds, Jesse. The pair and Caden both come on the show and couldn't beat you. So, you know, the, the champ reigns supreme at the top, as they say in Spain. Yeah, I had to retire while I was at the top and my record will never be beaten. All right, we're going to get into it. Are you ready? In five, four, three, two... Are the Hawks the worst team in the comp? No. Are you joking? Bruzy for president. Yes. Are three of the team to be, or do we ride off the D's and Brizzy? Uh, neither. Uh, Collingwood or Sydney's youth? Sydney. How long will Baz Lanker's band be? Oh my god, that's a tough one. Uh, probably two weeks. <laughs> Who wins the spoon? West Coast. Druzy or Caden McDonald? Caden McDonald every day of the week. Ah, you c- I'm not getting that one. <laughs> I didn't read the first question outright. It was, are the Hawks the best worst team in the comp? Oh. Not the worst team. That's yes. Right. That's actually a good question then. I think they are the best worst team in the comp. Uh, I'm a terrible game show host. Yeah. <laughs> I got a mortgage and three kids that don't love me. Um, <laughs> you got seven, Jesse. Great job. There you go. Questions are answered. The uh the main topic, we usually take a topic out of this bit and talk about Baz Lenka on the bag. What do you think? Bag Lenka. Um nah. I've seen I've seen the nickname Rayleigh really Sniff. I think that's kind of funny, but um, <laughs> the the question is will what will his ban be? I don't know. Is he even really gonna get banned or is he just gonna take a leave of absence? I, or is it the same thing when players get uh, pinged for drugs? I don't don't know the answer to that. Drugs are so prevalent in the current society like everyone knows someone their age that they went to school with that does drugs so yeah it's like a massive issue that would be so hard for the afl to hash out because like especially around sporting clubs there's always people doing drugs but um the ban was the question i don't know i like it was in the off season how hard can you be on him he's meant to be a role model i don't know maybe if he could just make a tiktok with his shirt off everything would be back to normal again yeah, that's my request too. Um, I think uh, I think I know you can't really hold anyone responsible for it, but um, I think l- like the Tom Morris situation, I think you look at this and think, who is it that spread this video around? Because they're the people that have done the most damage here. So they've displayed Bailey Smith, um, you know, doing drugs, and and the worst part of that, I would say, is the fact that it's you know showcasing to kids a role model who's doing drugs. But I would look at the person who's decided to to leak that and um and then the subsequent tiktoks that have leaked about him or the videos i've seen where it looks like he's doing you know no good i i think these people are kind of um escaping yeah i think i think they're making things worse but obviously they're a faceless anonymous person so we can't really point the finger at them too much other games include jesse thursday night it was just a dead game of football jesse Port Adelaide just have no flair anymore. Like, I was just watching this game. I was like, yeah, they might, like, make a little bit of a comeback. But they won't. They just won't come back and win this game. Ken Hinckley out for me. I've, I've seen enough. Yeah, I um I didn't catch the game, but this is another reason why West Coast are winners of the week because we hold their second round draft pick. So it's all coming <laughs> up. Uh, <laughs> sunshine and daisies at West Coast right now. Uh, but no, obviously a disappointing loss for the power and uh, it's a tight squeeze for that eighth spot. And um, mm. you think losing to a team that's you know above them and competing for that same spot, arguably, uh, it's a really bad loss in the scheme of things. So I might mm. it might cause a change of direction for the club towards the end of the year. I'm not talking about sacking coach but you know just in terms of strategy and the players they give games to and stuff Port Adelaide are not making the top eight everyone's saying like Richmond are a lock for the top eight for some reason um I don't know why I haven't been convinced by Richmond so far this season you saw your team lose by over 100 points to them do you think they're a top eight lock because I honestly rate Collingwood higher than them even though that they lost in the head-to-head clash uh it's a tough one because Collingwood's best footy is better but I think Richmond's best footy is good too I don't think they're a lock simply because it's quite competitive I think we've got a good top seven there with um you know Carlton Sydney St Kilda Geelong who are all I would say better than them or higher than them in terms of um 
ranking finalists, but uh, Richmond versus Collingwood versus the Bulldogs versus Port, I'd say Richmond and Collingwood are probably the favourite two to slip in. So they're not a lock, but I think they should make it. Don't sleep on Gold Coast. Essendon versus Carlton, you'd expect this to be a massive game, Friday night football. It was just an average game. It was the 150th year celebration for the Essendon Football Club, celebrating the success of a club who haven't won a final since the iPod. Essendon come out with competitiveness and not much else. Like, they just sort of show up. They're like, yep, we're the Essendon boys. We're going to fight for the badge. But we don't have a game plan and we don't know how to execute the plan that our coach wants us to. And then it was very cold night. And both teams went AFK in the last quarter. There was not one goal kicked in the last quarter, Jesse. It was a stinking game. And I'm not scared of Carlton anymore. Like, they had a lot of hype early in the season. But we've got them after the bye. And I say bring them on. Like, I am honestly, at this moment, couldn't care less about Carlton. Because Frio have 22 players. I know we're talking about Frio out of nowhere. But Frio have 22 (laughs) players that, like, contribute to a win. I don't think Carlton have that. When you can't put a goal past Essendon who are a bottom three side, how good are you? When when you try to flex, how big are your biceps? I, I think their best has been really good this year, but I think you make fair points. Their worst football hasn't been great at all. Um, they haven't been able to play four quarters at all. Like They haven't yeah. had one game where they've played four quarters. Exactly. So, yeah, I, I would obviously... I don't know how we dragged Frio into it, but I'd have Frio higher in the power rankings. But Woo-hoo! Um, but I don't make content anymore. So <laughs> A good game that happened this round was Fremantle versus Hawthorne, Jesse... Hawthorne, I knew, would come at us because they compete with the best sides every single time. They beat Brisbane a few weeks ago. They've beaten Geelong. Uh, They almost beat Melbourne. They got pretty close. I'm definitely missing someone here. Did they beat Sydney or am I making that up? No, they nearly beat Sydney, but they got way in front and Sydney eclipsed them in the last quarter and they ran away with it. But yeah, I suppose you could lump that in with the other performances. They're a competitive side and in the first quarter, they were slotting every set shot. I don't know if you saw much of this game, Jesse, but they were slotting like very, very difficult set shots. Mm -hmm. And then in the last quarter, they missed like two absolute sitters from 10 metres out and people were saying, Hawthorne would have won this game if they had a kick straight. Well, they were kicking bloody straight in the first quarter. Like, shots that you would expect to not make the distance or go out on the full. So it's, you know, swings and roundabouts. But it was an absolute arm wrestle when Freo went in at half time down for the, fir- for the fifth time in five weeks. Five out of five weeks, we have been wow. down at half time. And then in the third quarter, Sarong and Brayshaw out of the middle just started dominating. That little duo of 22-year-olds, I think they're 22. Sarong might even be 20 or 21. Yeah, Sarong like, would be they are at unreal, least a year man. younger. Watching Sarong play the other day was mouth-watering. How quick he is. How just, like, uh, purposeful he is every time he gets the ball, driving his legs through packs. We obviously got to see Nat Five come back into the side, obviously far from his best, but got to slot him in to the detriment of Will Brody a little bit, I think. Um, Will Brody didn't have his best game in purple after having a really good uh, month or so of form. Uh, But we'll figure it out. But to beat Hawthorne at home, who probably could have beaten us at points in that game, like in the third quarter, the game was on a knife edge. And uh, luckily it tipped towards Frio, who scrape in another four points to be level on top with Melbourne and Brisbane. This is an outcome that I wouldn't have seen coming at the start of the season, Jesse. Frio are legit, bro. Swag. Uh, yeah, no doubt. I um, mysteriously haven't been making content as soon as Fremantle beat Melbourne. And um, yeah, it's just a coincidence. Obviously, no, I'm joking. But um, no, they, they look damn good. Um, and maybe you could say they got Melbourne at a good time. But uh, even still, they're probably, you know, who who's clearly better than Fremantle at the moment? I, I wouldn't say there's a clear answer. Um, maybe you could argue Collingwood's form right now is uh, arguably better. But just because they beat Fremantle. But even still, no, no Fremantle, I would agree. Um, are certainly a contender for the flag, yeah. I don't think there's a better team at round 13 in the competition. Obviously, we've still got three months of football left to play and there's so much that's going to change in that time. But there isn't a better team in the AFL at the moment. We beat Brisbane last week. We've beaten the Ds. Our biggest test will be against the Swans coming up. Obviously, you got to get past Colton and Port Adelaide first. But there's just no team that scares me at the moment. Like Usually, you look at your fixture and go, oh boy, we got... We got Geelong next week, or oh, we got we got Brisbane next week. I'm really scared for those ones. But at the moment, I'm like, I think Frio could beat any side in the AFL, and it's the first time I've felt like that, pretty much ever. To be honest, I mm. don't think I've ever been this confident as a fan. Um, and we're just getting better every week. So, 
Happy days. I, I agree. There's, uh, there's no fixture that I think Fremantle can't win. Their hardest fixtures on paper are behind them. Uh, you will you, There will be a disappointing loss, I'm telling you, though. For every amazing win you have that you didn't see coming, you'll you'll get one um, that, that baffles you a little bit. But it won't be a big deal. And it won't be West Coast. So, happy no. days. <laughs> it won't be West Coast. <laughs> Brisbane versus St. Kilda. And I fell asleep during this game. I've been a very tired boy for some reason, Jesse. I should probably go to the doctors and get it checked out. But this was like a neck and neck game the entire time that I was awake. And then I woke up and it was a it was a blowout in the last quarter. I found out it was because St. Kilda had three injured players. It was a three-point margin at three-quarter time. And then they only had two on the interchange. And obviously, the physicality of the sport, when you don't have four players rolling on the bench, your players are absolutely gassed out there. And Brisbane just ran away with it. But I think if this game was played again, I reckon St. Kilda could get up because St. Kilda played Brisbane well and they play the Gabba well as well. Well, well, well. Well, well, what do you think? Yeah, I was thinking going into this game it might have been a danger game because I think the Saints um, got the chocolates against the Lions last year. I can't remember if it was like Metricon or the Gabba, but it wasn't Metricon. Okay, either way, they seem to play them well. So I agree with you there. Do you think the Saints are the fourth best team? Uh, We're going to learn a bit more... The ladder will correct itself a little bit next week because all the play, all the teams will have played the same amount of games, and I think St Kilda is probably in the box seat to land in fourth there. Uh, how do you rank that? Because we struggle with it on the pot a little bit. I'd say this this uh, behind Brisbane, Frio, and uh, obviously West Coast. Um, you've got <laughs> um, uh, St Kilda, Carlton, Sydney, and Geelong. Do you think the Saints have earned that fourth spot? The Saints are better than Geelong. Yeah. I agree with that. I, I, I would take the Saints over Carlton at the moment as well. Ever since mm. Weedering's been out, I haven't rated Carlton. Yeah, and fair enough. who else have you got in there? Uh, uh, the Swans. Collingwood and Sydney. Yeah, so they'd be in that mix for me. I, I rate Collingwood so high, hey. Mm. Um, I think St. Kilda's defence is better than Collingwood, so they're better than Collingwood, I'd say. And then I'd say they're neck and neck with the Swans. So I'd say they're in that fourth or fifth region, the Saints, at the moment. I haven't actually seen too much of them this season, though. So I'm yeah. going to watch more Saints games. The way I'd characterise it is that they've just been a bit more stable than Carlton, Carlton and Sydney in particular, and certainly Collingwood, um, who I don't think are a real shot for fourth spot, but um, they're certainly playing like a top four team at the moment. But yeah, I think Sydney and Carlton have been a bit more sporadic, whereas the Saints mm-hmm. probably only had one bad game this year against Port. Um, there may be more, but yeah. Time for the tips. I thought I was on for my first ever perfect round. There were six games. I tipped Melbourne and Collingwood won. Great. Uh, let's get into round 14's tips anyhow. Uh, Richmond versus Carlton. Who are you going to tip? I think I'm going to back Richmond to bounce back. I reckon... I was going to say, you've kind of bagged both of these teams a lot yeah. lately. No, I, I just haven't been too convinced by Carlton recently. And they could probably bounce back and have a massive win. But I don't know. Richmond are in better form? Question mark? They, they've been up and down themselves. But not as... Not as, like in the same game in the way that Carlton have been. Yeah, I think I think I might. Oh no, I'm gonna go conservative. I'll tip Carlton, but nice. I can see I can see Richmond definitely winning. Subject to change. Uh, let's get past this. Thinker uh, St Kilda are gonna beat Essendon. Yeah. Uh, Port Adelaide versus Sydney at Adelaide. Come on, Sydney win that surely. I had already done my tips and I tipped Port, but the more I think about it, it with their season just like on the the edge of the cliff now, do they have the motivation to take on Sydney and beat them? I don't know. No, this season's Sydney kind of come cooked. Steamrolling. Yeah, I don't know. Sydney, I don't. I find it hard to trust them, but they are a yeah. better team, no doubt. Just like your ex-girlfriend. Uh, on to your next one is West Coast versus Geelong. Uh, yeah, this one you'd think would go down to the wire. Yep. Um, a lot of proven stars coming back from West Coast in this game. <laughs> so uh, I, th- I think it'll only be 80 points to Geelong. So. <laughs> uh, Giant Stadium. Oh, this is... A- actual stinker even though it's a rivalry gws versus the bulldogs i went and watched the bulldogs played and they sucked and the only highlight of watching the bulldogs was watching bailey smith play because he is an absolute gun and boy does he love some fun yeah they just sucked to watch other than watching bailey smith i'm a real hater tonight i'm in a bad mood yeah um, and discovering uh, your feelings uh, about bailey smith yeah. uh, who you got to back gws or the bulldogs I, I, I think bulldogs. i'm gonna go with the bulldogs personally i think they're yeah. due for a good performance they've been up and down this year um, like a few teams we talked about, but uh, I think they will live for this one. They haven't really been up. They've just been like down and mid, but uh, anyhow. Yeah. Well, they this batted is... Collingwood. And there's... Okay, yeah. 
True. There's that just a true. few. There's a few performances around there where you're like, ah, oh, yeah, they're still all right. That is true. Um, and this last game is probably one of the games of the round. Gold Coast versus Adelaide is always a good game. On your podcast, you said you like watching Adelaide, and so do I. They're an entertaining mm. team to watch. Gold Coast are a very good side. This will be a good game. I'm telling you right now, this could be one of the games of the round. I'm going to back Gold Coast because I actually rate them very highly at the moment. Yeah, Gold Coast have been the better team, but I feel like tipping Adelaide here because Adelaide play the Suns well, I reckon, and I'm probably just going to look like an idiot, but they're just capable. I just think they're capable. And I, I acknowledge that the Suns have been good this year, um, but... Upset brewing, I'll say Adelaide. Only 6% of people have tipped Adelaide, so I uh, suck. I reckon Gold Coast is really solid, hey? Yeah, but that'll wrap are. up the video anyway. There we go. Drew Footy Show is back with a bang, baby. Jesse, thank you. You have one podcast out? Yes. <laughs> Many Blink clips on the channel? It. Yes. Yes. They went down very well. You've gone for the real quality over quantity approach recently, minus the quality. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know about that. <laughs> nah, it's real good. You've done a real good job, buddy. Thanks. All right. Thanks for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Take care, you plonkers. Bye.